I can sense it. I can just feel it that there will be some people questioning this game's inclusion in addition to the standard complaint of you're a dumbass, you stink. I'm sure there will be those who say Borderlands shouldn't count for this series. Well, I have a retort for one of these criticisms. While working through the not at all overwhelming task of playing every fucking game ever made, the definition of an ARPG has been rummaging around in my mind for a bit, so let's try to make some things more official. Webster's defines ARPG as nothing. Useless fucks. So we're just gonna have to fall back and use Sears, which is just a uh, chock full of tedious information. So grab your breakfast, perhaps even lunch, and let's go on a journey through gaming history together. Maybe dinner. If you are not privy, the A in this here abbreviation means action, and that's a busy word. It's a term open to interpretation. A lot of games are action oriented after all, so it becomes harder to define what should and should not count. Over the years, we started blurring the lines on what games fell into that ARPG classification. You had your standard role-playing game with numbers, stories, squealing computer noises. And then the more real-time controllable games hit the market, like Hydlide, The Tower of Draga, fucking Deadly Towers, to name a few. But then suddenly, like 15 years later, a game called Diablo releases and the abbreviation splits into two camps, the ARPG and the, uh, the ARPG. Now things are a bit dubious. For nearly 20 years, we had games where you input buttons in real time and gain experience, and we called them the adequate name. Now we have a new genre where you input buttons in real time and gain experience. But shit is now flipped like this. The point is, to this day, there is still a strange divide here. Games like Dark Souls are indeed referred to as ARPGs, but so is something like Wolson. And it doesn't take a lot of explanation to show that these games are very different from one another. But I'm gonna go ahead and just spread my horizon like a sick and disgusting plague, which means fuck it, Borderlands. So from now on, here is how we sort it out. There is the criteria, if you don't like it, post 20 comments about why you don't like it, that'll show me, but really, this about sums it up. So yeah, once again, pull it, twist it, fuck it, Borderlands. Alright, so as a weird oddity with bigger distinctions from the rest of the games I'll be looking at, does Borderlands 1 have what it takes to be the best ARPG ever made? Probably not, so this is just a huge waste of time. Borderlands is now a flagship franchise, a big old gearbox, big old Randy Pitchford, the large, the unrestrained ball sack himself, but back when the game released, it was a scrappy underdog, which added to its allure immo. I'm actually slightly intimidated talking about this game, because what is there to even really say? Back in 2009, when Gearbox showed off this cell-shaded shit and everyone lost their shit, there was major league excitement. And since then, it has been such a success that it even helped pioneer a subgenre, that being dubbed the looter shooter. I think it's only sharing a room with Destiny, but I could be wrong. I'll investigate if there are a lot of looter shooters. Speaking of which, I now need to play Destiny. Fuck. The game has so many things I appreciate. Like, it's really brown and dim. The story is secondary to gameplay. Plus, it's really brown. The world is oppressive and the inhabitants are oftentimes off-putting. It's quite brown. Yeah, in stark contrast to how this series ended up being, this is the only one where it feels like you're in the hellish wasteland you're supposedly in. Borderlands has an amazing theme, and gunplay with role-playing elements was novel, because who did that combo before? Besides Strife. Hey, anyone here know Strife? Game's badass and also kind of fuck, but that's not the focus of today. There are three reasons I am hesitant to chat about the game. Firstly, the mechanics aren't that deep, which is probably a negative thinking about it, actually. B, it's popular, so it's going to be hard to come up with things no one has said before. And third, the second game is probably better and more worth discussion. In the old B lands, you get a choice of four classes, although each one is pretty much identical. If the game is well-loved for art style, gameplay, character design, stuff like that, the series is also usually praised for its class building and diversity, except they didn't exactly nail that idea on their first attempt. Exhibit A some of the most boring skill trees I have ever seen. And it's sad, these seemed so cool back when the game first released, but perhaps we've been spoiled over time with FPS RPG depth. With only four tiers of upgrades available and most talents being tied to a specific gun or ability, there's not a ton of variety to play with. Plus the max level of 69, wait, that's gotta be wrong, what the fuck? But anyway, the long and the short of it is, by the end you'll have covered most of these skill trees with your massive stockpile of talent points. At the very least, each class has a unique skill, which are also fairly mediocre, to be honest. Truly, the shooting is center stage, with gear upgrades being more of where the power of your character comes from. And honestly, this is why Borderlands was a successful product in the first place. It feels good. 
shoot something directly in the face. That feels good for half the parties involved. Hit a major rocket across the map to revive yourself when you're going to die feels great. Scaling mountains that seem like they'd prohibit you from crossing them, uh, yeah, it once again revs me right up. Being unable to do content that's only a bit beyond your current level arbitrarily while simultaneously pissing on anything lower than you. Yes, you guessed it, that's bad. There's a little bit of poor balancing in the original Borderlands. If you're not being Goldilocks and the three fucking bears about it, the game is uneven often. But I can't deny the biggest charm is the gameplay itself. It's exciting to be in a space where you can level up and have brute force while simultaneously relying on your accuracy and tactical planning. The combat is more pronounced and player oriented than any game I've talked about so far, purely because of your control. Plus, unlike what's usually typical, getting around isn't a bad time. With cars, way stations, warping around, respawn points, you're always getting into the action quickly. Although contrary to action getting into quickly action, people just never leave you alone in this game. It's like your boss, they just never shut the fuck up. Yeah, Borderlands is known for being silly, having quirky characters, fun humor, however and yes ever, but seriously, the first game has a habit of continuously reminding you to go somewhere out of the way to do something you don't want to do. What you really want to do is being like Captain Blackbeard and hunt for treasure, but you're stuck being like Mystery Gang Fred, solving mysteries and driving around looking for shit, but you don't even get a fucking dog. The story simultaneously gives life to and bogs down the experience. On one hand, it's great at giving you incentive and context for your actions because you really don't know anything about your motivation besides the fact that money would be fun to get. On the other hand, you kind of wish there was more than this on-rails experience towards the plot. They're side quests and the like, but they're pretty thin and most times they push you to the plot stuff anyway. Now, when replaying this game for the first time in years, something dawned on me and that's, uh, and I'm gonna try to put this mildly, I don't want people to think I dislike the game because I really like it. Great game, but in several ways it's, it's, it's a bit shit. For example, let's talk about enemy variety. Over 80% of the bosses are just fucking human people. The moments where non-just human enemies are the focus are the most interesting parts of the game. Not only would you enjoy shooting at something fantastical in this alien world gun game, but they also have mechanics that are more dynamic than yell the same four voices lines at me, but even not worrying about the copious human bandit and human warlord and human dickhead, there's only like 14 types of enemies total, and yeah, am I being a pedantic stain not being happy with 14 types of enemies? Probably yes, but that's a relatively low number in comparison to every other game I've reviewed so far. But why do you slaughter lineages of beings anyway? For a gun or two of course, but according to Gearbox, there's approximately 17 and a half million different variations of weapons in the game. This is full of shit. There is indeed a lot of different guns, like a hundred that's a good number of models and stuff, but it's a bit wrong to claim there's a lot of interesting variations. You could find a sniper rifle that does 150 damage, and then find one that does 150 damage as well, but it deals fire damage now. Then you find the exact same gun with the exact same stats, but it's got this little notch on the scope. Hot damn, look at this brand new gun. Nice try, Randy, you dandy fuck. Also, considering exploration, the map never feels like a cohesive world, but more like a series of hallways. And to be honest, I'm not the kind of person to really get up in arms about this, whereas some people really hate hate hallway simulators like a linear game shot them at some point in their life. I suppose I was simply disappointed that 90% of the time I just had to jet over to a loading screen or just warp straight to a cave with only one pathway. I am being a bit harsh once again so why don't we chat about something nice, such as the gearing system. You have four weapon slots total with a shield, a grenade modifier, a class mod, and an artifact. There are enough slots here to let the player make fairly consistent progression on their power. Class mods are probably the most exciting min max thing in the entire game because some of these items are a bit like the average Koala, they are fucking crazy. Plus three to three skills, bunch of melee damage, huge dick size increase, there's a bunch of good stuff here. And then on the other hand, grenade mods are boring, but then finding a new and improved gun is always a lot of fun, but shields aren't that exciting because defense is a lot less fun than defucking of the enemy. And related to gear, the rarities are actually so expansive apparently that I didn't even notice how many there were. Since everyone developing a game has decided that Blizzard is the only company that did this correctly, Borderlands has a familiar progression. You've got your bottom of the barrel white items followed by the shameful green surpassed by the better blue rarity then purple then orange and then oranger and then orangest and then baby blue what the fuck are you doing randy when playing i didn't know that some items were considered uniques because they were the same colored blue i how could i tell they were special give me a break here so in total there are eight rarities that's that's a really big ass number my goodness but then the question becomes how doth thine loot drop well besides doming the denizens of pandora for random gear they store in their heads you can find chests and other openables that contain lots of things 
And let me tell you, this is one of the only games where chests are actually fun to find. This red box, to this day, gives me a little rush. So tempting, full of possibilities, subconsciously reflecting the treasure hunt, the exploration aspect of the game, an incentive to search for new areas and to truly see the world. Negatively, this is pretty much the entire end game. Yeah, as much as I adored this when it came out today, the end game of Borderlands 1 is basically loading screens. You check the daily deal at vending machines. Yeah, by the way, the stores are vending machines. That's cool. But each one has an RNG fueled deal running. And the loot that comes out of these is pretty much the bee's knees. Who made this saying? Bees don't have fucking knees. Or do they? Please tell me. But yes, the vending machines is one of the best farming methods. Another one is red chests at predefined locations, which isn't that good either. Really, most methods don't involve killing bosses, save for a few exceptions. So you're really only thinking about shooting things in this FPS game from the very beginning to the end of the second playthrough. And that's fine. That's a lot of time. I'm not knocking it. After that, though, if you really want to get overpowered stuff, it's all about reloading and trying again and again. Or fighting the singular hard raid boss. Unfortunately, it is hard, so it's worth the time to get as good of gear as you can get. But something that was very apparent when playing the game again, it's good that you farm vending machines and chests instead of bosses, usually, because these fucking boss drops are a pain. Besides having to skim the floor like a Roomba, it's not fun to have to read 40 weapons in a row. Now, you can minimize the reading by only looking for the yellow or better beams of light, indicating the rarity of each item, but it's hard to see. It makes you long for the overhead approach other games can utilize. In essence, this was the entire experience. A long run of me going, oh wow, this was so much fun, only to realize that things weren't so peachy back then. It was a, bit, a little more kumquatty. I would, as a gamer, the most oppressed class, give this game a huge thumbs up. I think it's a lot of fun. The first time you play through Borderlands, you'll really enjoy the world and the characters. The story will be investing. Bits will make you laugh. All that good stuff. But once you beat the game, get a really powerful character and complete every boss once, you'll start thinking the game's a little too repetitive. Every encounter feels the same. Each new gun is pretty much the same as each other gun in its respective tier, and the brownness loses its luster from the lack of luster after a while. So to confirm pointless osity, Borderlands 1 is not the best ARPG ever made. Great. Happy day. At least I can play Destiny and probably say that the game sucks cheeks ass as well. But in the spirit of so many different ARPGs, the good one is always the second game. So I'll, I'll see you for that shit at some point.